we'll talk a little bit about non-degenerative diseases because I think those are important as well. And I think like if I'll just give you like a general approach, we're not going to spend like too much time on it. But uh, if you think about where the location of the pathology is, that like really leads you to what your differential diagnosis is. Then you can look up things. You can look for in the patient's chart to see what's going on. So think about things like in terms of, uh, of where their location is. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the spine is really just an extension of the CNS. So all of the disease processes that you can get in the brain, you can more or less get in the spine. And statistically, the distribution will, can be somewhat different, but kind of think of it that way. And your spinal cord is sort of the brain parenchyma. You've got cisterns that are your CSF space. And then the dura is sort of the dura. Uh, but, but it's best to identify the space where your pathology is and sort of know where it is. And then, you, you know, you can, you can look in StatDx. Like if you put intramedullary mass, T2 hyperintense, you'll get like a pretty good, a pretty good diagnosis. If you type spine lesion, you're not going to find anything. Um, these locations, like I said, so there's sort of three spaces that you can be in. You can be in the cord, so that's intramedullary. The cord is inside the dura, so that's intradural. So things are kind of classified to whether are they in the dura or are they outside the dura? Are they in the cord or are they outside the cord? Uh, so the cord itself is intramedullary. Then you kind of have the dura, and then the space that's contained by the dura is, is intradural, but extramedullary. So this space right here is, is sort of uh, the intradural extramedullary space. And then everything else is extradural, and that kind of includes the epidural space, sort of everything else. And uh, sort of by knowing that, you can kind of try to figure out like what the most likely diagnosis is going to be. Intramedullary, think about it, like I said, like the brain parenchyma. Anything you can get in the brain parenchyma, you can get in the spinal cord. Tumors, inflammatory demyelinating processes, infarcts, those are going to be the most common things. Things that are not common in the brain, vascular malformations, cavernomas, things like that, you can get them as well. But these are going to be sort of your most common things. Try to identify if there's mass effect. If there's expansion and it looks like there's an enhancing mass, then you can lean towards these. If it looks like there's not that much expansion or that it's primarily like a signal abnormality, then you're thinking about sort of an inflammatory process like MS or granulomatous disease. That being said, it can be very difficult to tell. You can see bad MS that has a lot of mass effect, but think about that in terms of where, of where you're going. Um, extramedullary, so if you're in the dura, then uh, the most common pathologies in that area are masses, okay? Uh, if they enhance and are single, then think about schwannomas and meningiomas. You can basically stop there. If you say it's a schwannoma or a meningioma, you're right 97% of the time, and you can move on. Neurofibromas are nerve sheath tumors, and uh, to a certain extent, like, are just lumped in with schwannomas. I mean, they're really not that much different. If you have multiple, think about METs. You can have drop METs from up above. Uh, and then kind of think about CSF processes, the same as like in the brain. Meningitis, cystocercosis, arachnoid cysts, like things like that. You can have more rare things. Again, the things that are more rare in the brain, echinococcal echino cysts, not common in the brain, not common in the spine. But you can have it and kind of think about it like that. Um, extradural lesions, sort of extradural lesions tend to be things that are spreading from elsewhere. You can still have those tumors like sort of arising from, uh, from elsewhere, from the nerve root from uh, primary tumors of the bone. So, you know, osteosarcomas and chondrosarcomas, infection, uh, they can spread from the epidural space and, and so on. Uh, so think about that. And like, if you can sort of localize where your disease process is, then you're kind of, you've kind of like gone a, uh, a long way towards figuring out what's going on. So the spine is just an extension of the CNS. And uh, many times you're not gonna be able to give a different, like a true diagnosis. But if you can tell them, like, well, this is an astrocytoma or an ependymoma, then they know what's going on. It's like a tumor and it needs to come out. Uh, if you can tell them, you know, you think it's an inflammatory process, then they can look at CSF, inflammatory markers, uh, things like that. If you have no idea what's going on, think about imaging the brain. Because if you have masses in the spine and you see masses in the brain, then you're like, well, I'm thinking about METs or some multifocal process. If you have something that looks like a demyelinating lesion in the spine, Look in the brain. If you have MS in the brain, then you're a lot further towards your diagnosis than you were. One uh, final interlude here. This is like great history I saw the other day. This person's in pain. I'm just amazed that like someone put this in their note. 
wasn't me. <laughs> this person like had a, a T10 to ileum fusion. I don't know what he thought was going to happen. That's like that's a painful surgery. Like this has got a huge incision. It's not good.